today I'm going to look at um, how to change the piston rings in the power head from this Yamaha 54 stroke. Um, so we're just going to uh, open up the crankcase, uh, pull the pistons out, uh, clean up a little bit, um, just check the bearings and check the fittings, we'll put it together, um, put the new rings in, check the gaps on the rings, all that sort of thing. So that whole basic process. So we'll get going now and we'll start by getting this uh, crankcase open. So here's the uh, the engine block. We've got the cylinder head off here and the exhaust cover off here. Um, I'm going to leave um, the uh, the driving um, sprocket for the timing belt and everything up here um, on for now. Uh, normally down here there's a little bit of a Yamaha tool that goes in where the drive shaft goes that allows you to hold the crankshaft still where you take it off. Um, I don't have one of those, but I was actually going to make one just using an old drive shaft, just heating it and bending it like a huge Allen key essentially. Um, but I don't think we need to do that first. I'm just going to um, start by taking these bolts. So the bolt pattern here, um, same with all these sort of torque tensions like power heads, um, cylinder heads, etc. Uh, we're going to start and just sort of do one, two, three, four, and then work our way into the centre. So we're releasing from the centre, and then we're going to do the same with uh, these bolts. So we're going to do these smaller outside ones first, then the inside one second. Uh, the outside ones are 10 mil heads, so I'm just going to go around and, and loosen those. I'm going to be lazy and use the uh, impact wrench for these. Um, not with a 12 mil, with a 10 mil. Um, I am um, hoping we're not going to have so much, much trouble with corrosion here as we did lower down. So I'm hoping not to snap any of these. But just work all around in this spiral pattern. Working towards the centre. And when we do these up later, we'll be doing them up um, with a torque wrench in the exact opposite, starting in the middle and spiraling the way outwards. Oops. Okay, so there are all the uh, 10 mil head bolts and then we'll do these with the 12s. And same idea here, just one, two, three, four, spiral in. That's all the bolts for this. Um, I'm going to go grab my little uh, plastic hammer and just have a bit of a tap around here. I'll actually also, while I'm there, I'm going to grab a little pry bar as well. So I'll get the plastic hammer and a pry bar. Okay. Um, Now I don't want to uh, really pry this too much anywhere with those mating surfaces. I want them to stay as good as they can. There we go. So a little bit of gasket maker in here. Now, what we've also got that I need to replace uh, is a couple of oil seals here. So, in this side also, we've got these um, white metal slipper bearings. So, the halves of them are in here. So, this is kind of a combination where, really, although it's all one, these are the uh, um, 
half the bearing for the, uh, the big end and then these were just the bolts for the case. So the bolts uh, holding the big end bearings together on the conrods here are a 12.8mm bolt. Um, the smallest 12 point socket I've got is a 10mm here unfortunately. So I'm going to have to persevere with a little 8mm eight, eight, uh, spanner. Uh, so this will take a little while and a bit of uh, knocking just to crack them. Um, so if you're going to do this job, I um, highly recommend you go and find yourself a 8mm uh, 12 point socket. I'm certainly going to have to get one uh, in order to torque them up correctly and put it on a torque wrench. But I'm going to take them apart with this for now just because I want to push on and get these out. Not really the best tool for the job but it will do. So just be aware of that when you go to do this job. Once you've got these bolts out, and you'll notice the groovy sort of spiral here. Um, you can get this slipper bearing out, and then this con will be free. So I'm going to go and uh, take all of these off, and then I'll be free to lift the uh, crankshaft out. Um, same with the. Um, uh, valves took out that way. I'm going to take a note of uh, which cylinder these will come on. So this is the top of the engine, so this is cylinder 2. So I'm going to keep these in order so I can return them to the right place they came from. Okay, that's the last one. We should be able to just get this crankshaft out. Um, Sorry, it's a few days later, I had to duck out then. Um, so, sorry, I've pulled out one piston because I was just showing someone, but I'll, I'll pull another one out now and show you. Um, so, if I just slide these out from the top, they've still got a fair bit of oil on them, but I'll just... A little bit more around here. So once you pull these pistons out, um, it's important to know what comes from where. So at the moment I've got uh, bagged up the top half of the big end bearings and I've just put little uh, scratches on the back surface of those just so I know which is cylinder 1, 2, and one, two 3, and 4. So I've got those marked. Uh, these pistons are marked with which ways up, see with the word up, intuitively. Um, but I still need to mark these. So I know this is cylinder 1. And this is cylinder 2 I've just pulled out now, because we are starting from the top of the engine. Um, but it's important to get everything back where it came from. Uh, so this surface you're pretty free to, to score up. I was just using a bit of a mark here, so I can just call this cylinder 1. And I'll just put a couple of scratches here for cylinder 2. This isn't a you know, precise surface. I'm really just scratching into the carbon to be honest with you. Um, now, what I am going to do though, hang on, I'll just grab some gloves uh, and I'll show you. But um, I've got some new rings. It's not immediately obvious to me um, of the two top sort of compression rings um, which way they go round. They're a slightly different profile, but the profile they have doesn't match the um, images in the service manual so I'm actually just going to have a quick look at what these rings were like so we'll have a look at these I'll compare them to rings we've got and that way we just know what we're trying to replicate when we put the new rings in okay so we've got this uh, ring out now and I've got like, these uh, ring pliers they're not uh, they're not ideal I don't think because they don't really hold the ring particularly stable while you expand them, but uh, I'll have to do for now. So this top ring,
looks to me to have a pretty square profile on it. Um, the service manual shows this top ring as having a, a rounded profile. Uh, so the ring itself seen edgeways, the outer surface is quite rounded. Um, it's definitely not the case with the ring that's come off. And the sets of rings I've got from Yamaha um, so you've got your oil ring and the two at the top and then here you've got one that looks like it's very square and one that's uh, kind of beveled a little bit on both outer surfaces so I think I'm so this one I would say matches the service manual image of the top ring the most but the top ring that just came out looks very square to me um, I'll just um, quickly show you the service manual I think that's probably so you can see here this is the section on um, both the profiles of the the sets of rings um, but it's also about um, looking at the top side clearance how big is the um, is the the groove in the piston compared to the ring so i.e. this distance down here A, B and C so I'll be measuring those once I get them in once we clean them up um, but I'm just sort of trying to match these profiles and nothing here is obviously square so I'll see if we can find one that's got this slope the one with the bevel both sides I'm presuming is what they call the rounded one um, the oil control rings are pretty obvious um, so I'm just trying to differentiate these two they're not clearly marked in the box so I'm just going to get this second ring out and uh, compare them. The weights of the rings are quite different as well as the, uh, the profiles. So this second ring is uh, definitely both thicker and taller. Which makes it pretty conclusive that this is the top ring, this is the middle, and these are the oil control rings. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take all these out, then I'm going to clean the grooves. Now I've seen quite a few different techniques. Some people swear by sort of scraping a, a broken old ring through. Um, some people say you should never put metal near it um, because the clearances are, are quite, quite specific. These don't look terrible to me, um, so I'm going to clean them up pretty lightly to start with, um, just to see how much it brushes out, and then uh, I'll sort of have to ramp up the techniques to be more aggressive as um, as necessary. But I'll take the rest of these out. They're all marked now, so here you'll see that's got a two on it. Uh, that's actually just got a three, just three scratches. You're welcome, you know, there's no dramas doing light scratches like that in the carbon on these top surfaces, so they're not gonna cause any harm. Um, but it is very important to get them back in the way they came out. Okay, so all these uh, piston rings are out now. Um, a lot of this seems to be a bit of oil, there's obviously some carbon there. I'm actually just going to put this through the parts washer to start with, um, just to gently sort of wash the grease away and uh, um, see how much sort of tough carbon's left. Um, degreasing them is great, you know, it makes me able to see it get a bit clearer. Um, obviously they will have to uh, lubricate this quite extensively before it's first start up. Uh, degreasing it might look nice and help you see what's left in the way of carbon to clean up, but it's certainly not... Um, a state you want to uh, start an engine up in without any lubrication. So I'm going to clean them for now, um, see if we can get these rings a bit cleaner, or at least the ring gaps, um, or the grooves, um, get the new rings in, but um, and then just re-lubricate when we do that. Okay, so these have been uh, put through a parts wash with a bit of degreasing. Um, there's still a bit of gunk in there. Um, so I don't really have anything here 
from a chemical point of view, capable of softening carbon. It's quite different. There's a few sort of chem dip products and things that'll do it. Um, so I am going to have a gentle scrape round. So we've got these really thin rings, which were part of the oil rings. And then we've got these two they're thin as well. Yeah. So these two rings are the top and the middle ring. So I'm actually just going to uh, snap these, hopefully. Actually, you know what, it doesn't even have to need to snap, it just needs to be apart. It's quite flexible, this one still. Um, so sorry, this is the top ring, it's the slimmer ring of the two. So I'm just going to use this factory edge and just have a gentle sort of scrape along here, see if there's much coming out. Um, We've still got to measure the um, the gap above uh, the ring and the um, the actual gap between the ends um, with some filler gauges. So I might just use a little bit of this is just a break and metal sort of cleaner. So I'm just going to try a bit of this in here. Um, I'm not overly concerned with how dirty these are, to be honest. Um, I think it's always diminishing returns. It's a bit like uh, scraping a boat hole that hasn't been anti-fouled. You know, you can try and get it spotless, but it's going to grow weed and barnacles and whatever on it pretty quickly. So I think sometimes there are certain jobs where um, you shouldn't get obsessive about it. But having said that, the ring does need to fit properly. If it doesn't fit, you're getting bad gap readings just because of carbon. And that's not a good situation either. So I haven't been using the um, ends of the rings to clean this out. They're actually pretty good, which I think is a pretty good sign. Uh, what I have been doing is just putting a bit of um, this brake and metal cleaner on it. And then just using this plastic scour just to... Uh, rub around the outside. The um, you know they're aluminium so they're not very uh, strong metal but this plastic scour is not even coming close to scratching them or anything which is good. Um, just cleaning the outsides up a bit and then which just smears a bit of that oil and carbon around and so a bit more spray just cleans it off. Um, then I've just been using a uh, just a light sort of uh, toothbrush. Once again, nowhere near hard enough to damage the aluminium. So just getting a bit of the cleaner on and then just working around. Um, it's not getting them spotless, but it's more staining than uh, carbon buildup. So I don't think it's going to affect how the rings fit. Um, so I think I've been lucky. You know, I've definitely seen people using rings and just literally gouging out huge amounts of carbon from the grooves. But that's not the case with this motor, so I think I've uh, been pretty lucky. Um, and then once I've finished spraying and brushing, I... Um, get the air compressor and blow the uh, residual spray and some of the remnants out. So I'm pretty happy with these. I think these are, uh, you know, as you can hopefully see, they're pretty clean. They're not shiny. They don't need to be. You know, you just need it to fit. You don't need to spend hours and hours trying to get every little stain off them. So, uh, I'm just going to probably just blow these out a little bit, get some residual spray and gunk out, um, and then uh, install the new rings on them. Okay. So, before you put rings in you need to uh, ensure that the gap's correct on them. Um.
Okay, so to do this, I'm going to have a look. Um, so we've got our top ring here, and I'm just going to pop it in the cylinder and uh, spin it around a bit. A bit of oil, I don't think ever hurts. We should just put a wipe around the cylinder. Then I'm just going to use one of these pistons just to push down until it's level. And you can tell it's level by just using the, uh, the ring groove as a guide on the piston. So once you've got the piston ring in and you've used one of the pistons to push it down, which is a way of making sure it's, it's sitting square inside the uh, cylinder bore, you just put the feeler gauge in the gap in the ring. So this is a 0.3, which has got some resistance, you know, it's a little bit loose, I reckon, uh, let's just have a look, sorry, doing this one-handed, so it's a bit slow, what the next uh, size up on the feeler gauge is, hang on, I'll put this camera down, back in a second, so, it's quite tight, the 0.38 is quite tight, but a 0.35 is just got a bit of tension on it. So I think that's what's about it is. Uh, sorry, what I think um, the gap is. Um, so if you look here um, in the service manual, it's saying that uh, top ring should be between uh, 0.15 and 0.30. So this is slightly over spec. Um, I'm not super worried about it compared to the cost of buying oversized rings and all this sort of thing it's just not worth it. this boat's ultimately it's not a race boat or anything it's just designed to get from uh, one side of the river to another twice a day you know, it's just a commuter boat so yeah it's a little bit out of spec uh, better be slightly large I think because if it's if it's slightly over 0.35 uh, you've lost a bit of compression um, but if it's under then the two ends of the ring, when the, when the ring expands with heat, the two ends are going to meet and the ring's going to sort of buckle, which I think is way worse than being slightly over. Um, so I'm going to go on and do the same process with the second ring and the oil rings. Um, these can actually be up to 0.5 and 0.7, so we've got a bit more, um, a bit more room there. So I'll do both those and I'll let you know how they go. Sorry, I had to duck off there and have a look at another job. Um, so I've got my last said to you, but the point is we're at the we're at the stage now we're going to put these rings together. So I've measured these rings inside cylinder one, and that's piston one. This is uh, sorry, it's piston two. So this one here is piston one for the mark on it. Uh, so now that I know these are all either within spec or slightly over instead of under. If they're over, uh, sorry, if they were under, I would have to file them back a bit, but they're over, so that's you know, it's not ideal, but it means I can leave, put them in as they are. So I'm going to pop these ones in now. Um, so the first one I'm going to put in is this um, expansion ring, which goes on the bottom. This one's pretty straightforward. You can very easily roll it round. The only trick with these is they've got these sort of concertinas, and you don't want them hooking over each other. They just have to butt up against each other. So that's the only thing there. Now, above and below that um, go these oil rings. Now these ones don't have a top, um, top and bottom, as far as I can tell, they're not marked in any way, whereas the top two rings are actually marked with a T, uh, showing which way it goes up. Uh, some, some rings have a little dot, some have the word top uh, from memory, not that I can see it right now. These had a T on them, oh there we go, yep, so that's got a T on that side, and T on that side. Now, with these ones though, they are, they are different. And I'll see if I can show you this. So this one's just got square edges on it. Um, and then this one, you'll see it's got a little notch in the ends here. Um, that notch goes around a pin um, that is inside the cylinder groove. Uh, so just here, you'll see there's a pin here. And that's what that notch wraps around. So this ring with the uh, little notch goes um, on top of uh, the um, expansion ring and goes over that little groove. Now 
one thing this does is it locates this ring so that it can have the gap the gap can only be in one location this this ring can't rotate um, in its groove it can only go in one place so I'll just work this one down into position these uh, oil rings are very slim rings they're pretty easy to to maneuver I'm not going to use the pliers or anything for these uh, but once it's in position that um, that notch is around that ring. I'll just quickly show you the page that shows you the clocking, like the positions around the face of the pistons for all these rings. That one you don't have any choice in because the notch locks on that pin, that's the way it goes. Um, but I'll just quickly show you where all the others are relative to that. So also what you'll see here in the manual is the sets of rings and where the gaps are. And it's got locations here for where the gaps should all be relative to the up mark on the piston. So that's nice and clear when it comes to positioning your ring gaps so you know how to orientate all your rings um, once you've got them on the, um, on, the, uh, on the piston. And here the E just indicates they need engine oil as the lubrication uh, when putting them all in. Okay, so this straight uh, oil ring with the square edges, um, I'm just going to rotate round and it goes uh, below it, below the uh, expansion ring. And uh, as per that guide, so that particular ring is considered ring 5, and it goes at sort of uh, about 4 or 5 o'clock. Uh, compared to the up. So we've got 3 o'clock here, so it wants to be down this way. Well, it needs to be down that way. So I'm just going to rotate that one. Just grab the edge of the ring. And bring it around to that sort of correct position. So now the gap of the top ring is um, where the pin is, which is uh, sort of roughly like 10, 11 o'clock. Um, now the expansion ring itself should be round here at, I guess, sort of one or two o'clock. So I'm just going to use this guide, and this actually had a little bit of uh, red paint to show you where the join is. And I'm bringing this one around to one or two o'clock, which actually is sort of, fortunately, roughly where it was. Now, the uh, middle ring is the uh, thicker of the two remaining ones, as we sort of figured out earlier. And this is, let's have a look, ring two, according to this. And it needs to be at three o'clock. So here's the up again, so we're going to have the gap over this side. This one I am going to use the uh, ring expansion pliers on, because it's a... Uh, much heavier weight ring and I don't want to go sort of trying to wind it on like I did with the oil rings and I'll just start with it in position with the gap at three o'clock okay and then the top ring goes at nine o'clock so over this way once again, although you can rotate these ones pretty easily, I'm just going to sort of start with it in roughly the right position. Alright, so that's a full set of new rings on piston one. So now I'm going to repeat the process. Okay, so uh, last piston now. I'll just go through this once more just in case I can uh, explain it a bit more clearly for you. So first ring I put in is this expander ring and the gap for this ring goes um, at sort of about two o'clock. Now this ring once it's in can't rotate because the little concertinas on it um, catch on this this locking pin that's on the bottom groove 
Now, the next one I'm going to put in is the very bottom ring. Now, this ring, uh, number five, goes at, um, so if up is 12 o'clock, uh, this one goes at around about five o'clock. Uh, so these are really light rings. So I'm going to start with the gap at five, and then I'm just going to wind this one on rather than using the uh, uh, ring expansion pliers. So once that one's in, uh, this is the other critical thing, is this is uh, this concertina is slightly overlapped now, and they'll lock into each other. So you've got to make sure they don't do that. Make sure that the ends of that expander ring are just butting up against each other. You don't want those ones overlapping at all. Um, now, the top oil ring is the one that has this groove and that locks into the pin. Now the pin itself sits at about uh, 11 o'clock. So I'm just going to start one edge of that pin and then just wind this one on until the uh, little notches are either side. So that's the, uh, the oil ring and the expander ring setting. Now the middle one is uh, what they call ring two on here. Ring two goes at uh, three o'clock. Um, can't quite recall. One's going to be your uh, air intake side, one's the exhaust side. Um, this ring has a top and a bottom and the top is indicated by the little T. So I'm just going to get that upwardly in position, three o'clock, and then just use these ring expansion pliers just to open it up. I'm trying to avoid scraping the ring along the surface, um, but if you have to manhandle a little bit just at the end to uh, get in position, I don't think it's the end of the earth. Um, so the top ring now, once again, little T on top, and the gap goes at nine o'clock, so the opposite side of the uh, piston. So we've got it right way up, and the gap in the right position on the sort of clock face. I've got to say, I'm not a huge fan of the style of, uh, of uh, ring expansion pliers, but I guess they're better than nothing. Alright, so that's the procedure. That's all four of them done. Um, now I'm going to um, just push them back into the cylinder bores. I might give those cylinder bores a bit of a clean. They're pretty good. You can still see the quats hatching on them. Uh, you might... Um, hone the cylinder bore at this stage, which is a relatively simple procedure. Um, I don't think I need to with these ones. I'm not going to uh, run the risk of doing more damage because I just don't think it's necessary. There's still quite a good crosshatch on them. So the other thing I can't uh, stress enough as we just get this last one in is um, is if something feels wrong, chances are something is wrong. This really isn't a uh, really isn't a forceful process. If you're having to uh, use much force at all, then something seriously uh, needs looking at. So just undo the compressor, back it off, take a look, and start again. So um. I think we'll finish this one here. Uh, it's actually the next morning now. Um, sorry, it's getting a bit dusty. Um, I'll go on and do another video on re 
installing the uh, crankshaft because I've got to make the custom tool to take the uh, bolts off to change the oil seal. So we'll do that as a whole separate video. Um, what I will show you though, hang on, I'll lift you up here, um, is I put a bit of oil in overnight. Um, didn't fill it to the top this time, but just want to put a bit in and none of them seem to have appreciably sunk. It's about what I put in last night. So I think that's a pretty good sign for these rings. So I'm just going to tip that oil out and uh, yeah, and then I'll, I'll sort of start a whole separate video about putting the crankcase back together. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you want to sort of uh, follow along to the completion of this particular project and uh, I'll catch you soon. Bye bye.